Now, Johnny Greenwood is best known to some as the guitarist of Radiohead, but he's increasingly respected as one of Britain's premier film music composers. I met up with Greenwood and conductor-arranger Robert Ziegler in London's legendary Abbey Road Studios, where they were hard at work on the score for Paul Thomas Anderson's film Inherent Vice. A couple of years ago, I gave Greenwood my own Kermode Award for Best Score for Anderson's There Will Be Blood, and I began by asking how the pair first started to collaborate. It started with him listening to some fan recordings, bootlegs of some of my classical things, and he put them up to picture and then wrote to me and said, I'm doing a film called There Will Be Blood, um, do you want to write some more music like this? So how did you feel when Paul Thomas Anderson first got in touch? Oh, I'd, well, I'd never written film music before, so I just saw it as a chance to get in a studio with an orchestra and, and, and play with the wonderful toys that is, you know, is an orchestra and a, and a recording studio. What state was the film in when he approached you? Had he shot it? Yeah, he shot it and he tended to just put music up to picture and let it run and run and run. He was just very enthusiastic about just having music very loud in his films, always has been. You're shown a film in which there's, you know, there's dialogue and sound effects to some extent and he's put temp tracks up against it. How does that work? Yes, usually you're asked to copy quite exactly someone else's music. But Paul's very different. He, I mean, he even cuts some of the film to the music, which is just absurd, it's, and so the wrong way around. And so lots of the things were recorded with no click and with no temp track, so no one knew what was going to go where. We were just... Lots of the music was written for the mood of the film or for the characters or for the story. And I was supplying him with five minutes of music about the characters or about the landscape and he'd fit it to the picture or find a part in the film where it would work. I remember very clearly seeing the film for the first time and about 20, 30 minutes in thinking I'm not distinguishing between the sound effects and the music. It all sounded like all the sound was coming out of the landscape of the film, which you should take that as the highest compliment. How do you approach physically writing do you sit there with the image playing on the screen or do you sit there with a script how do you go about doing it there we blood it was all about what was on the screen and but then there's also some sweet little chamber pieces that are all about um, his relationship with his son so i wanted you know i was kind of looking for the the kind of hopeful romantic stuff as well in that film Is it substantially different writing music for film than it is writing any other form of music? It's completely a collaboration with someone and that's why I really like it. You're in, in it together with someone and it's a bit like being in a band. They're providing a visual and a story element. But other films, it, it can be more sort of tortuous and just to kind of find some sort of inspiration in it. How does your work with Robert figure? How do you collaborate together? I send Robert the scores and he tells me what's not going to work and, <laughs> and <laughs> not entirely. suggests how they can be rescued, how can it sound, shows me things that orchestras can do that I just assume they can't, you know. So there's one cue in There Will Be Blood called Future Markets and I just remember Robert saying, oh, the bassist can play this twice as fast or this can be far more furious if this happens. Arranger and conductor Robert Ziegler. You just take and you play the, you strum the strings of the violin, but with a guitar pick, and which seems pretty simple if you've ever played the guitar before. But if you're a violinist, it doesn't come naturally at all. They don't do they, so they have to hold their fiddles sideways like a guitar. But the great thing about that effect, it doesn't sound like what I've just described. It's a sound, and you can't actually put your finger on where it's coming from. If you can get a handle on what the goal is, then you can reach that goal in several different ways with an orchestra. I mean, what Paul does, I think, more than any other director is use his original music for the temp track, but quite often he'll get like some sort of demo from Johnny written really early days, and it'll stay 
and stay, and it'll stay in the film, and then we'll end up sort of doing a version of that with orchestra, because he says, no, I really like this, let's keep this. That's rare. Very popular film composers, they get photocopied. Paul gives you an incredible amount of freedom to develop this one and come up with ideas, which is great. I think people tend to do their best work when you do something like that. When you watch the finished film, are you conscious of listening to your music or are you able to lose yourself in it and be overwhelmed by the film as a piece? No, I'm listening to the music. In a way, when you first try the music up against a picture, that's when you see what works. In a way, the longer you leave it, the more you lose the focus on the film, I find. While I was talking to Johnny Greenwood and Robert Ziegler upstairs in Abbey Road, down the corridor, Oscar-winning composer Michael Danner and first-time director...